heading to Oaklawn Park for Whitmore Day. Let's get this going. Trust the Profits is proud to be sponsored by Game of Silks. Go to silks.io to get in the game. Real ownership, real races, real rewards. That's right, horse racing fans. And welcome to Keats Cash Plays, where we look for value play horses, hopefully at a price of five to one or higher, come post time. And my name is Keith, and you can find me at the handle each every stride on X Twitter. Appreciate you joining me. This is episode 15 of Keats Cash Plays. We go all across North America, really trying to find those value play horses, hopefully at a price of five to one or higher come post time. This week, we head to Oaklawn Park. It's a little bit of a break for the uh, Kentucky Derby preps. Everybody uh, gets a moment to take a step back and see where we stand. And uh, this week, we actually head to Oaklawn Park for Whitmore Stakes Day. It's great that uh, they have a grade three to honor this uh, champion sprinter, Whitmore. I remember he used to bring all the crowds to Oaklawn and, and won at the biggest stage at the Breeders' Cup. Now we're going to be looking at, I'm actually going to be looking at three horses that I feel can present value, but I did not come alone. I have a guest this week that knows Oaklawn just like his backyard. And he also really is known to pick a, a price winner and knows how to pick them. And also he's good for a uh, AI mashup as well. So you could let him know about that. This is none other than the Wolf of Oaklawn, Chase. Appreciate you joining me, Chase, and welcome back to the show. And and how you doing today, man? I'm I'm doing well. And as always, I mean, thank you for having me. It's uh, it, I was I think on the first episode, so it's nice to see you know just the the number of views go up and comments and everything. It's uh, you got a really good thing going here. I appreciate the support and uh, thank you again. Yeah, you were uh, the first uh, guest, and appreciate you always coming back. And you know, I just thought Oak Lawn it was a big stakes day. Saw some uh, wide open fields and, you know, those big fields with the, you know, with the big purses, even for uh, made in special weight races. So look forward to talking to you about uh, We actually have three horses each that we're going to talk about that we picked. And we actually uh, handicapped these horses before the morning lines came out and they came out today and we did a great job. We got five to one or higher and we got some price horses. So we're going to talk to you about that. And appreciate that and so this is going to be for saturday march 16th so we're right uh right around the quarter for saint patrick's day and uh you got any uh big plans this weekend there wolf well my wife's maiden name is duffy so i'm sure that uh, guinness will be sprung upon me at some point um <laughs> yeah uh other than watching other than that just probably you know watching basketball Oh yeah, just the uh, March Madness is here, and I think they're going to be doing the uh, the seating. I saw these teams, you know, winning the championships to get there, and uh, yeah, we do have a horse that we're going to try to beat. So this is uh, Prince of A Carlo, who is the featured winner, the biggest payout winner to date on Keats Cash Plays. This was uh, episode ten, and I bring this up because uh, Wolf of Oaklawn had the winner before this was uh, Necker Island. So uh, he's got the second place one here, but we're going to try to do better than this. So this was a $23.60 payout for episode 10 here on Keats Cash Plays. I'm c coming for you, Prince Pay Carlo. You're my, <laughs> you're, I, all I see is a bullseye now. Gotta love it. So yeah, it's uh look forward to talking these value play horses with you. And uh, yeah, why don't you start us off if you feel up to it? It got, uh, you know, nice uh, prices on the, you know, to be had. Sure. Uh, I, I started in race five. Uh, it's the six furlong, uh, $62.5,000 non-winners of two something, uh, optional claimer. And, uh, post time is a three Oh four Eastern two Oh four God's time. And I, whenever I, you know, last time I did, did your show, I kind of changed my mindset into thinking like, what would be good, like, uh, Derby war kind of, kind of horses or not Derby wars, um, uh, stable duel. Uh, kind of horses <laughs> uh, that, you know, aren't going to cost me points that should be kind of moving, you know, closing into uh, other, you know, other, you know, speed. And so I, I found myself looking at, and especially I'm okay doing this because Oakland's been a pretty fair track so far. Uh, I, I decided that I was going to use the deeper closing eight uh, always angels 
uh, at eight to one here for my value play. Uh, Johnny Ortiz trained, uh, owned by Rags Racing. Get Ramon Vasquez up. Uh, Vasquez and Ortiz are hitting at forty four percent with a pretty small, uh, you know, sample size for it. But uh, if you look, this horse was a winner last out uh, over a slot over a muddy track and managed to close five lengths to still still win. I mean, that's just the sort of thing that you don't usually see on the uh, in the slot. Uh, but he did get a, the, the hot pace to kind of set it up. I, I think always angels gets another hotter pace here today. And if that happens, then I, I like this one to sneak up and get a, at least a piece. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think, uh, you know, eight to one morning line now and, uh, could get a nice pace set up here and, uh, nice post to work out an outside trip. And I, I like that one actually at eight to one. So that was a great pick there. And, uh, you know, it's interesting because some of these picks that we come up with, everybody, it's just that we see these horses also getting bet down. So we've seen a lot of movement on the tote board. Uh, so sometimes, you know, we're on to something, too, with these PPs. So it's, it's great to see. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So, yeah, I'll just sprinkle in real quick that uh, what my first cash play is going to be in race number seven. It's a shorter field, but I just thought, uh, just give you this horse here real quick is... Uh, the number four horse, uh, Texas Women for Arts. So I love that name here. So we got, uh, yeah, just this filly was reunited with Ricardo Santana Jr. And uh, won last time with this horse uh, on. And I just think the actual, the break from December 15th will help. And I uh, just thought uh, trainer Steve Asmussen. So you got some nice uh, connections there. And uh, 18, Asmussen is actually hitting at 18% with horses uh, off of a similar, this is a 92 day return to the races. And uh, I just thought a lot of in the money finishes at this uh, six furlong distance. This is actually one of the shorter fields uh, on the card. So just thought a lot of uh, second place efforts and especially that one at Zia Park. Now that was a, you know, a little bit out of the circuit here, but I just thought that was a decent race. And you know, other than the debut, this horse, uh, you know, ran uh, is only ran fourth worst, so uh, just was seventh on debut, but a lot of in the money finishes. So, I'll uh, I'll take uh, that horse here, and uh, I really just thought that could really trip out well. And uh, you know, this was uh, number four Texas Women for Arts, so that was race seven. And uh, yeah, we'll move it along here. I know uh, you got another play for us. Uh, what were you looking at uh, for your next horse uh, there? With? I I think we clash. I think we go head to head now with uh, <laughs> with race eight, uh, the six furlong, hundred and forty thousand dollar non winners of two lifetime Arkansas bred allowance uh, for Phillies three years old, three years and three years and four years old, which I've never won two. Years. Uh, and this is my my boom play on the card. It's the eight sassy lass at twenty to one here. Uh, this horse fits kind of a theme that I've been noticing with horses at Oakland, which is it's just a horse that needs a clean trip and a dry track. Yeah. If this horse can run back to what it did, what it did before it started catching off tracks and started catching, you know, trouble, then I think you easily have a horse that could hit the board or maybe spring the upset for, for Burl, the Pearl McBride. And I'd like to point out that this one is also owned by Burl, the Pearl, uh, so you got a little bit of the, cool. the pet horse angle going uh, with it too. Yeah, it's uh, I I like that angle actually. That's a that's kind of a live angle where, like you said, the twenty one morning line here, and uh, I, that's a price I, I am looking at. Now I am uh, looking at a horse here that uh, is actually like you mentioned, we're dueling, and we're actually in the next uh, stall over here. So we got a uh, count it all joy. So let's uh, bring up some points about this horse here for you. All right, let's take a look here. Now, I thought this was an interesting horse to me. And uh, yeah, I'll explain why here. Now, as far as this horse, it stepped up in 150K uh, stake, sort of like a stake last time, and recently ran on March 2nd. Now, I just thought it uh, just didn't disgrace itself. Uh, go in uh, fifth place, it was wide, and it just came up empty. Now, if you look back at these uh, previous efforts, let's look a little bit further at the PPs here. I just thought, uh, you know, just the previous efforts, they fit here and you get another Ricardo Santana horse. So I think if 
Ricardo Santana Jr. has a, a big day. I, I'm gonna have a big day too. And uh, I might, you might, I, you actually might need to help me out with this uh, trainer uh, pronunciation. Let's see, we got uh, Alta Moreno or Alta Moreno is a uh, U- Ulitario Alta Moreno. <laughs> there you go. You got it. Uh, yeah, hitting yeah. at nine percent, but um. I just thought, you know, sometimes when you get a big jockey aboard uh, on a, I'm not too familiar with this trainer, but I just thought, uh, you know, the December 30th race was interesting to me. Uh, you know, broker maiden and then uh, dueled and broker maiden that way, and faces, uh, you know, back to slightly easier from last time. So, was looking at a uh, count it all joy. Now I do see it's a five to one morning line, so I was a little little surprised it was that low i thought i was going to get a little higher so maybe there's a something the morning line maker knows as well so (laughs) yeah i'll go with the nine and we're dueling here in this race so that's great to see i'll tell you what if you're going to hang your hat on somebody at oakland park uh you could do much worse than hanging your hat on ricardo santana jr on on big race days it's true yeah he gets it done and uh if you just seems to get some nice rides with these horses kind of uh you know can you know kind of what the horse is uh good and skilled at maybe kind of save ground and kind of come up the rail a little bit so we'll see what happens there and that was uh race eight saturday at oaklawn all right great so we got uh i know you have another horse here so we have we actually have uh one horse each here left now we're looking at uh another uh race here we got a uh, race number nine now this is actually the big whitmore stakes so i didn't have a horse in this race but you were actually interested in ninja warrior yeah, tell us why yeah sure first i want to say i'm so glad that they made this the whitmore like whitmore is by far yeah. my all-time favorite horse at this point like i i love whitmore um yeah with ninja warrior i i'm actually in contact with the connections of this one they really like how it's been running it's taken it's earned the right to face tougher uh, beating a field last out on the allowance, uh, running and able being able to just kind of stalk a little bit off the pace. Uh, they said they really like this horse's chances, but it's got the leader on the eighth pole. Um, cool. I I, th- I I think that this one is always going to run its eyeballs out for you. Uh, it's always going to give top effort from everything that I've seen, and it's got a little bit of versatility to the run style. It can run and and duel and and win it on the front. Or it can show a little bit of tactical speed and just kind of sit off of a uh, sit off in stock, and I think that might be the kind of perfect p- place to be. Uh, and then uh, to use everyone's new favorite phrase, uh, this horse might tri- you know just trip out here and uh, <laughs> get the job done. Yeah, no, it's uh, you got a field of a lot of hard knocking horses, and I think you bring up a good point. I really think that you know with Christian Tours aboard and he's been really hot for Diodoro now and. Um, I like it. I mean, I think five to one in a shorter field. These are a lot of veteran horses, so you could really get some value here. And if you're right, now you could be really bold and even play, uh, you know, key this horse in some kind of uh, exotics and, uh, you know, exactas and tries. So I I like it a lot for Ninja Warrior. Absolutely. And I think if you're going to use any sort of light horses uh, uh, vertically uh, underneath or anything, you look at like the late closing two to Hano Twist. Uh, look at like the four surveillance uh, for uh, K- uh, Keith DeSormo with uh, James Graham up those horses that, cause there's going to be a little bit of a pace out in front with the horses like Jackson traveler being entered. And those are the kind of horses that'll be closing into that pace and rounding out those exactts and trifectas. Yeah. It's going to be a very interesting uh, pace scenario and it should be a great race to, you know, honor a champion horse. So it's a uh, love to see it. I remember seeing the crowds, you know, you know, it's a great horse when the crowds really come out to see Whitmore and, and the, these horses have a following. So it's just fun. It's great for the sport and it's just very enjoyable. I want to say I, on Twitter a couple of years back, I saw a, a photo of him jumping a Mazda Miata just like out <laughs> out in the field. Uh, and it made me love him even more. Yeah, they get, you know, second jobs. And uh, I know that uh, they even try to, you know, obviously become pony horses and um yeah, I'm going to Old Friends uh, in about uh, 20-something days, so I'm hoping to see some of the horses there. Yeah, I'm going to Lexington for the bluegrass, so I'm really looking forward to this and uh, making a That's stop awesome. there at Old Friends, so going to be a great time. That's going to be a killer time, and I'm, I'm jealous of you, good sir. 
All right. Well, I'll definitely uh, be taking pictures and I'll tag you in some. So definitely, man. And uh, appreciate it. Now, I do have uh, one more horse here that was interesting to me. And we actually talked uh, off air about this horse. This is uh, Pat's property. Now, I just thought that if there was a horse that could really, you know, wire the field and at a price, I really just thought that this horse had a look. Now, I know you've actually been a couple of times you've bet this horse, right? Yeah, I've been on the on this horse because it will get this sort of like inside draw with the speed going two turns, and you really think this horse could just hit the rail and 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 keep on going. And I haven't ruled out him doing that at you know at all. Like th this, I think is a really good spot. I really do like this pick quite quite a bit um, because it's another horse where you I feel like you know what you're going to get, and that horse is going to be running fast early. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I'll take my chances like that. I mean, I see a, a good pace scenario. Now, this race features uh, the comeback of Rocket Can. So let's show you Rocket Can here real quick. And with Rocket Can, I just thought, um, you know, this horse is working lights out for Bill Bott. You know, you remember Rocket Can on the Kentucky Derby Trail. He won a, a big uh, prep race at, uh, I think, yeah, Gulfstream Park. But for Rocket Can, I just thought, you know, lights out workouts here i mean look at these workouts the uh you know the class of the field you know bullet 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 but the thing is for me is if you want to really try to create value and uh you know i'm not going to be including rocket kid it just this is the spot for me where i'm going to try to beat him off of the long layoff i mean right. consistently uh, that's what i'm going to try to do i just thought with uh you know with this horse the number two horse let's go back and i'll just show you why here real quick I just thought the pace scenario really could set up. Let's look a little further here for you at the PPs. Here we go. Yep. For uh, Rocco Bowen, I just thought, you know, it could get loose on the lead here. And uh, it's just, you know, as far as this horse is actually carrying, I'm not a huge weight guy, but this is this horse is carrying 118 pounds. And a lot of these horses in this field are actually carrying 124. So true. That was just, a, I'll take the six pounds there. And as far as, I just thought this horse could get loose, early speed, and, uh, you know, just has some good figures at this distance. So give me uh, Pat's property there as my cash play as well. Yeah, like like I said, I, I really liked it. I, I considered that one to be, if I were to play this race, it's probably the horse that I would have landed on as well. Awesome, Wolf. So, just a recap, I put this together for uh, Whitmore Day. So you'd love to see it uh, Saturday, March 16th. So I'm going with uh, race number seven, uh, Texas Women for Arts. And race number nine, I like Count It All Joy. Actually, race number eight, I like Count It All Joy, the number nine. That's actually where we're dueling. And I like uh, race number 10, the speed there, number two, Pat's property. And uh, tell, tell them about your picks there, Wolf. Yeah, sure. In race five, we had the eight, always angels at eight to one, a horse that should be coming from off the pace. Then we use another deeper closer, the eight sassy last in race eight at 20 to one. Huge price there needs to catch a fast track, hopefully gets it here. And then race nine, use the five Ninja Warrior at five to one for uh, Robertino Diodoro and John Holloman. Very cool. So awesome, man. So yeah, this was uh Appreciate you joining me. This is uh, Keith's Cash me. Plays, and uh, love having you on as a guest. And we always—it's always so exciting when it's uh, post time for these horses too. You feel like you have you—you you put the work in and, and handicapping, and uh, it's fun. You know, I always kind of bet a little bit across the board on these horses, and uh, uh, you know, I, I hope you enjoy uh, the races just like me. And uh, I know you got a lot of college football and uh, college—not uh, college football, college basketball on tap. Yeah, yeah, I've, I'm do, doing a lot of college basketball content in this coming week with the, you know, with the tournament and everything and Selection Sunday. So it's a, uh, it's, it's a crazy time of the year. That's always a lot of fun, though. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Awesome, man, and and uh, tell everybody where they can find you there on uh, social media and uh, you know your outlets. Yeah, sure. Yeah, you can always find me being abrasive on Twitter at of Oaklawn. That's O F and then Oaklawn like the track. Uh, or you can follow the show, the Notorious OTB at Notorious underscore OTB. 
Uh, that podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts. The Notorious OTV brought to you by the Sports Gambling Podcast Network. Always such a great foul. This is the Wolf of Oak Lawn. And uh, just like he said, the Notorious uh, OTB podcast, uh, always a great follow. He's got some great guests and might have a, a pretty big guest here uh, that you see on your screen right here. But uh, yeah, I'm going to be on uh, Wolf's show. So definitely look forward to that. I always enjoy you uh, with the home and home. That's what we call it. A, a nice yeah. home and home. So we uh, home and home series probably split the series there. And uh, yeah, look out for Wolf's content and Appreciate you all joining us here on uh, Keats Cash Play. So good luck this weekend and keep cashing and keep moving forward. Take care. Now.